Hi, good morning Esteban. My name is Chessa Jordan. I'm your invigilator for the OET speaking session on the 9th of January 2020. How are you doing? Hi, good morning. I'm good. Thank you for asking. How about you? Well, I'm great. Can you tell me your full name for the record, please? My full name is Esteban Manor. And what is your candidate number, please? My candidate number is 21123242. Thank you. And you are taking this test as a nurse. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Thank you. Can I see your ID, please? Sure. Here it is. The warm-up questions are not assessed and are a chance for us to get used to each other's voices. We'll just talk for two to three minutes. All right. What do you think is the best way to establish rapport with your fellow nurses? I think the best way to establish rapport with my fellow nurses in the department and other members of the healthcare team is to promote positivity and communication in the workplace. I walk into the hospital excited about my day and the ability I have to change people's lives. I verbally recognize my teammates for excellent patient care, so they know that I notice and value their work. I also make sure to ask for clarification when I need it, and repeat what a teammate says to confirm that I understand and that they know I was listening. It's important to work in a respectful and collaborative environment, so seeking assistance and providing it in return has helped me grow my relationships with my co-workers in previous roles. Why did you decide on a career as a nurse? I come from a long line of nurses. Both my grandmother and my mother are nurses. Growing up in that environment and seeing how much they love what they do every day is both inspiring and motivating. I love the challenges and thinking outside the box to come up with solutions keeps me excited and engaged. I'm proud to continue the tradition of nursing in my family. Above all, knowing that I'm truly making a difference in people's lives is what truly makes it all worthwhile. Describe a time when you took on an unofficial leadership role in the workplace. In my previous role, I had a patient who suddenly went into cardiac arrest. I had to call over my fellow ICU nurses to help me with the life-saving measures the patient needed to survive the incident. In this situation, I gave each of my team members responsibility. As we were working on saving the patient, I paid close attention to how each of my fellow nurses was doing with their task, and I was able to step in when one nurse was having difficulties with chest compressions. When your patient is in a critical stage, you must act like a leader and utilize the resources available to you, including your co-workers, to save their life. Tell me what you feel your greatest skill as a nurse is. I'm very proud of my ability to really listen to what a patient is telling me. Nothing frustrates them more than feeling as though they're not being heard. Having spent the past five years in the medical field, working directly with patients has shown me just how far actively listening can go in helping make someone comfortable. My most recent position included working with patients directly in admissions, which meant I was often the first face they'd see when they came in and the last on their way out, as well as everything in between. In that time, I learned that addressing their concerns, and making sure they felt we were genuinely listening to them, was just as important as receiving quality care. As a result, I helped to establish a patient advocacy program, to help teach other nurses, those same listening skills. Tell me about a time, when a patient's family was dissatisfied with your care. How did you handle that situation? I once was floated to a unit that I had never worked in and wasn't sure where supplies were located. The mother of the patient did not recognize me as a regular floor nurse on the unit and this already made the family leery of me from the start of the shift. I continually had to prove myself throughout the day because, as nurses, we all do things slightly differently. There is not always a wrong way or a right way to do things. But in this case, there was a policy to be followed. I followed it and apparently, my dressing change was slightly different than previous ones. I communicated regularly with the charge nurse, and she came to check in with the family to address any issues in real time. Great. Thank you very much for sharing that. 
So, let's move on to role play now. I'll take the part of the patients or perhaps a relative and you'll take your professional role. The purpose of the role play is to get evidence of your ability to communicate effectively with patients. Use your ability to fulfill as much of the role play as possible. Do you have any questions? No. You have up to three minutes to prepare the role play. You will start the role play after that time. I'll let you know when three minutes are up. You can ask me if there is anything you are not sure about and you can make notes on the role play card if you want to. Here's a pencil for making notes. Thank you. You can look at the card during the test, but you must return it to me at the end of the test. Please start preparing now. Thank you. Excuse me. Yes. Can I have a name for the child, please? You can call him Alan. Thank you. No worries. Your preparation time is over. You can now start your role play. Don't worry if I stop you when the time is up. Hello, good evening. My name is Esteban, and I am one of the registered nurses working in the recovery room. Am I talking to Alan's mother? Yes, I am Alan's mother. How is my child nurse? Nothing to worry. Your son's surgery has been completed successfully. The child is perfectly all right, and he is under observation for one hour. Oh, thank you. Nurse, I wish to see my son. Okay. Well, how may I address you? You can call me Chessa. All right. Chessa, I can understand your feelings. However, I am sorry to say that visitors are not allowed in the recovery room. I can explain to you why visitors are not allowed as well. I don't want to hear your explanation. It's my son who is in the recovery room after a surgery. I have to see him. If I were you, 
I would have said the same. Please be calm down Chessa. Nevertheless, I am really helpless in this situation, and also, it won't take too long, to shift him to the ward. Please, nurse. I just want to see him. Chessa, please pay attention to me. First of all, your son will be feeling drowsy, due to anesthesia. And he needs a recovery time right now. Also, our hospital policy doesn't allow visitors in the recovery room. As we are considering the recovery room as a sterile area, no outsiders are allowed. I can understand your words. But nurse, this is for the first time he is in hospital for a surgery. Your thoughts are really sensible. Don't worry Chessa. He is safe here in our hands. I'm glad to hear that. And nurse, I am very much concerned about his pain. I appreciate your concern. Don't panic, Chessa. The pain will be minimal. Obviously he won't be noticing it. We have provided IV injections of painkillers, followed by oral medicines. Okay. It is really good to hear, nurse. Do you have any other concerns? Nurse, he hasn't taken food since yesterday. He might be feeling hungry by now. May I know about his diet plans, please? Of course, with pleasure. Thank you. Your son is asked not to take anything by mouth, for one more hour. After that, we can start with the soft diet, and we'll move to normal later on. One more hour. He might be very hungry, nurse. Chessa, as he has some effective anesthesia, his food digestion process might not be effective, and may cause nausea, vomiting, and sometimes other complications as well. So, it's better not to give anything by mouth for another hour. Am I clear to you? All right. I got it, nurse. Great. Is there anything else that I need to clarify? Nurse, may I know how long my son wants to stay in the hospital? Your concern is considerable. Perhaps the discharge will be as per the doctor's order. Usually, one to two days of hospital stay will be required. And the discharge will be provided completely based on the progress of his condition. All right, I got it. Nurse, I would like to know the post-discharge care and management. Could you please brief me? Sure, I'm really glad to explain it. First of all, make sure that, while bathing, the water doesn't enter the ear. However, it is more of a problem if soap enters the ear through the tubes than if water does. For this reason, when washing hair or showering, use ear plugs. Washing ears with a face cloth is allowed. It's mandatory to use ear plugs while swimming as well. A slight earache is usual, which is relieved by giving your child the pain medication. Severe pain must be reported to your physician. Oh, I see. I will surely take care of it. Good. I hope I am clear to you. Yes, of course. You are. Do you have any other questions for me? Not really for now, nurse. All right. If you have any more queries, feel free to contact us. Sure. Thank you for your support. All right. Thank you for listening and understanding my words. I wish your son a speedy recovery. Thank you. You are welcome. That is the end of your OIT speaking roleplay. All the very best. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Please, like this video and encourage us. Subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Kindly comment your suggestions and help us do better.